Hey there, Simone here with Bulletproof Business Growth and as always with some ideas and insights for what to really pay attention to when you're getting ready to scale your business. And one of the most important things to keep in mind is when you're scaling, that means every single person on your team has to be on their A game and so do you. So all of that, for that to happen, you have to be able to support it. So one of the things that I hear very often from our clients is that one-on-one -on -one meetings are really hard for them to do because yes, they take up a lot of time. So what I want to address today is why skipping one-on-one -on -one meetings is costing you a ton of time, money, momentum, relationships, all that sort of stuff. It is one of the most important things that you need to do to have a superstar team that can really support you and enable you to be at your best. Because what your team is really there for is to manage up, is to enable you to be at your highest and best value for the company. So everybody wants to have fewer meetings, I get that. But there's a couple of meetings that you absolutely cannot skip. One of them is your team meeting with your leaders that you absolutely have to do every single week and it has to be done the right way. But the other one, and that's the one that's tough to do, are your one-on-ones with your leaders. And I wanna emphasize this because quite a lot, the misconception is that you have to do one-on-ones with everybody. No, we wanna make sure that we really start nicely structuring out your company so you don't have more than three to five reports at a maximum. And so those are the only people that you actually do one-on-ones with. And you cannot skip those because everybody loves to get that time back because especially if you're supporting more than three or five people, you are possibly spending hours and hours and hours every week meeting with people. But getting that time back is costing you more than it gains. And when you think about one-on-ones, they are your time to connect. They enable you to go from that purely transactional level to a transformational level with your team where you build all those unspoken things and spoken things that don't generally happen. And here's a big caveat. A lot of our clients, when they first come to us, they say to me, oh, you know, we don't need to do those one-on-ones. We meet all the time. I see people in the hallway all the time. We talk on Slack all the time. We email all the time. We talk on the phone all the time, whatever it is. So that that's all transactional stuff. That's like, hey, we're connecting because we need to talk about this project or because we just ran into each other in the hallway or whatever it is, but it's not prepared, it's not structured, it doesn't have clear outcomes. That means it doesn't have clear takeaways. So it doesn't fulfill any of those requirements and real benefits that a properly done one-on-one -on -one creates. So the other part of it is that that time, you know, when you have a team meeting, there's a bunch of people in the room and especially the introverts on the team, they're going to be quiet. They're going to be sitting back. But in general, people are not as willing to share, to be open, to be vulnerable, to ask questions that they think are dumb or whatever it is. But a lot of people don't speak up in groups, whatever their reason. And that means you miss a lot of their contribution. And we can't miss anybody's contribution because that's we ha what we have them for. That's what you're paying them for is their unique contribution. And hopefully you hired people who are better at what they do than you are. So you can't miss that contribution. That's what you're paying them for. So make sure that you have that special, concentrated, focused, prepared time with them that gives you the biggest outcome. So one of the reasons is that you really should know each and every one of one of your directs on more than just the transactional level and doing these meetings is so beneficial and it's also something that you need to teach through all the layers of the organization so when you're doing it with your leaders 
and you're doing it with the understanding that part of you doing it with them is also that they can teach it to their own directs and their directs teach it to their directs and so on. So that by the time the week is done, every single one of your employees has had some FaceTime, some one-on-one -on -one time with their specific leader. So you start at the top and it goes down all the way to the very last person on your team. So this is teaching this process forward just as much as you getting what you need from your direct so that you know what's going on, that you're supporting them and all that good stuff. So the intention really is to understand, you know, what's going well, what do they need help with? What are their top priorities that they're working on and what's next kind of on their horizon. And you want to do this every single week. So we call that one-on-one-on-ones -on -one -on -ones because it's a one-on-one -on -one that you have every week, once a week. So one-on-one-on-one, -on -one -on -one, think about that. And that every week thing, our clients ask us all the time, do I really have to do it every week? We don't really have anything to talk about every week. If you don't have something to talk about with your direct leader every single week, that's important and that you really need some, some uh, structured time, there's something that's not going right. So if you're, if you're telling yourself that's the truth, I would really dig deep and, and, um, you know, understand is, is that just something that you're thinking so you don't have to spend the time. And if that's actually true, then there's something that you're not doing that needs to be done. So consistency and regularity is really, really important. So nope, you don't want to do this every other week, but, the other misconception is that these one-on-ones have to take a long time then. They have to be an hour or whatever. They don't. They can be as little as 15 to 20 minutes if it's prepared, if it's structured, if everybody knows why they're there and what they're doing. You can get a ton done in 15 to 20 minutes. I would say half an hour max. If something really pressing, something big is up, you can expand it more. That, but in, a, in general, you don't need more than those 15 to 30 minutes. So we want to make sure that these are consistent, better to have them quick and regular than not having them because they will really help you to increase engagement for your employees. And it helps with building that close relationship. So you're not just building a work relationship, but also a human relationship, which is one of the most important elements for employee retention, for not having that sure, not having people leave because they actually feel seen, they feel cared for, they feel supported, they feel like they can be extremely successful in their role because they have everything they need. And that piece is pretty big because when you think about it, people don't leave companies, they leave leaders. So if they're leaving, most of the time, to be honest, it's something that if they're your directs, you as a leader didn't help them with. So we want to make sure it's consistent. It's just the time that you need. And then what do you do during that time that makes it successful? So let's talk about that. For one thing, like I said, it's something that should be very prepared. So every single every single you and you and the person should have an agenda so preparing is very very important so everybody understands what they're there for and what the outcome for this meeting is one of my mentor, mentors used to say no agenda no attenda and that is true for your team meetings and for your one-on-one -on -one. so preparation is the key for this to be successful now we teach our clients to have a report that they get from every single one of their directs at the end of the week that already lets them know what this teammate is dealing with, what they need help with, what's going on for them. And then our clients can look at that report and come up with their own agenda for what they think is important. And then the teammate has a very specific way that they are going to fill out a prep form so they know what they want to focus on. So between each person in that meeting having a clear agenda and clear focus, 
now we're coming actually we're on the same page and we know what we want to talk about and for each person this agenda is transparent so everybody knows what the other person is thinking about so it's part of being really clear being transparent and also being open because that makes this more than just a job. It makes this a commitment when every single week you have to show up with intention, with clarity, and you have to be willing and able to get the coaching, move forward, have, be challenged, all those things that actually makes people want to show up. So preparing and having an agenda was one, number one. Second thing is you want to ask those five key questions <laughs> and they're very, very simple. The first one is what's going well. Now, everybody wants to talk about what's going well. So that's a good thing. Second one is <laughs> what do you need help with? How can I help? Third one is what are your top priorities? What are you working on? What are you focused on? What are you doing looking forward? Then you talk about fourth question is what's new on your radar? What's something that's coming up, coming down the pike? Something that I don't really know about? What's going on for you outside of work? And the other part is we want to have a conversation about growth because that's the big piece. We want to be able to support people going forward and growing so that they stay, in, stay challenged and engaged. So let's take these apart a little bit. First one, when we're talking about what are your wins, what's going well, well, that's wins, celebrations, accomplishment. And why that's so important is it helps people feel connected. It f helps them feel like their contribution is meaningful, that they are significant. And those are two of the most important human needs, contribution and significance. So they want to feel connected. They want to feel like their contribution matters. They're being seen and it also in a fast, fast paced and demanding environment, it's important to have that energy return as in, you know, I did something, I completed it, I did it well, something is off my plate, I'm celebrating it. And for you as the business owner, it's important to know what's going well, because if this teammate is doing something that's going well, you want them to do more of that. It's not just about boosting their ego, it's about finding out what's going well so they can do more of it, which of course is a win for you. Second thing, so you get through the celebrations, you talk through that, and then of course it's really important to talk about how you can help them be better. So how can I help is a very important question. It helps them understand the problems that they have, it understands you, it helps you to understand the problem that they have, and it helps you to unblock them so going forward, this problem won't keep getting in their way. And again, this is something, if it concerns the entire team, it's something you want to bring up on your team leadership meeting. But at the same time, there may be something that they don't want to be transparent about, that they feel vulnerable about, that they don't want to expose in a team meeting. So they don't necessarily want to seem like, you know, I, I can't do this in front of the whole team. So it's something that they're going to be a lot more open about when you have that one-on-one -on -one with them. So it's also an opportunity for you to give them feedback. If you know, a teammate is showing up repeatedly with the same problems, well, you got to look deeper. Why does this keep showing up? If you can see why this is happening and they can't, you can give them some coaching that they desperately need probably at that point, because if it's an ongoing thing, they're going to be frustrated about it. And just simply, there's going to be a lot of places where you can move the needle for them that they can't. So asking, really talking about in detail what they need help with, not exactly in terms of the project itself, but everything that's underlying. And then three and four, you know, when you want to talk, when you talk about what their priorities are, well, you want to make sure that they haven't gone off the reservation, that they're on track with their part of the operational plan. Now, the way we, take, we teach operational planning is very structured, it's very collaborative, and it, it's, it, the process itself makes sure that all the way from 
the top from the top layer to the bottom layer everybody is in alignment and everybody has their own growth and development plan so that's what you talk about you talk about their plan of priorities that they collaborated on and they committed to so you talk about and make sure that their priorities are still in alignment with the company plan and you know business is pretty flexible it changes all the time so sometimes we have to move priorities around and we want to make sure that everybody's still on the same track so getting those priority aligns is really really important and that collaboration aspect that you can brainstorm you can bounce things off of each other is also really important so and you want to find out what else is going on for them and um that will also give you much more intel about what this specific person uniquely sees as a challenge or an opportunity coming towards you that you can prepare for because everybody will have a different view of the situation will have a different perspective and the more of their perspective we get the better we do so that was number three and four and then the fifth thing you want to ask them about how life is going now you might not want to have like a long drawn out discussion about that but if there's something going on for them in their life that's keeping them from being super effective it is crazy how often people won't say anything about that unless you ask so ask them hey what's is there anything that's going on for you anything i can help with you know anything in your personal life that i should know about that i can help with so they actually feel like there's this human connection and you don't just care about them because they get work done. So we want to make sure that everything that you talk about is in direct context to your plan and that if anything comes up that the rest of the team needs to know about, that it's something they address in your weekly team meeting so the other part when you're talking to, the, to them about you know what's next in the company because that's an it's kind of the third piece you're talking about what's next in the company it turns out that people really want to know you know what's our growth plan what's going on what's some context that i need that i'm missing and that's again that's something you should be talking about on your war meetings that's something you should be talking about in your all hands so everybody knows about it but your one-on-ones give you the opportunity to talk about it in direct correlation to this person's role so every time you're you're really spending that personal convert that personal time with somebody you want to make sure that you kind of take the larger context and break it down into something that specifically applies to them because that makes it all the more meaningful so we want to talk about context we want to talk about long-term development goals of the company that may be new that are not in your vision yet that they haven't heard about and for them to get this kind of greater context and this the trust that you're placing in them to talk about this with them also means they're going to have trust in you because they feel like they're significant again that so very important and they can also if something is coming up that they can specifically help with that's a really good place for you to find out about that so those when you go through these steps you'll have a lot more connection you'll have a lot more information you're able to coach you're able to unblock and then at the end of each of these one-on-ones it's super important that each one of you take notes and write down your action steps because here's the biggest piece when your teammate places trust in you opens up to you shares something with you makes requests is vulnerable whatever all those human things are if you don't follow up and actually make good on this you're going to do worse than if you never had this meeting so for you it's very very important that you follow up on any items that you agreed on so you want to keep your promises you want to make sure that you take notes notes through the meetings so that you can fulfill your action steps because that really boosts their trust in you and it it helps with your relationship that you have with each other so 
all that said just means make the time to have those one-on-ones with your leaders. They need you, you need their trust, and you need to have that relationship where you know they can, where they know they can really rely on you and you're going to show up for them. It is, it might feel like a ton of time invested. I'm not saying it's not, but that time will pay for itself. So invest that time, make sure that you show up, that you're prepared, that you're present, no scrolling on your phone or being distracted. So this person really feels like they have you for that amount of time. And that the benefits that come out of that, aside from all the soft stuff, is productivity. You know, you can help them get through stuff much faster than they could without you. Uh, it, it significantly lowers your churn. It's really expensive when good people leave. So you want to make sure that doesn't happen. Like I said earlier, people don't leave companies. They leave leaders. You don't want to be that leader that gets quiet, quit. So lower churn, it, it increases their, their trust in them and your tr- trust in them both. And also it's something that's a really good piece in your culture that people really value. So I hope this helps. We have a brand new training out that talks a lot more about this in detail. So if you want more, go to bulletproofbusinessgrowth.com slash leap and check out the new training that we have there. And we will connect soon. Have a great week.